Okay, so let's continue solving more differential equations, and we've been working with second-order linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. Basically, anything of the form a times the second derivative of y with respect to time, plus b times the first derivative, plus c times y is equal to zero, where a, b, and c are just constants. And we know we can solve differential equations of this form by trying out the solution y is equal to e raised to the rt. And if we were to plug that in, we get uh, r, e to the rt times a r squared plus b r plus c is equal to zero. And we know that the exponential function can never be equal to zero, so we recover our characteristic equation a r squared plus b r plus c is equal to zero. And the roots of these give us the exponents of our solutions. So we can find the roots of a second order by just doing the quadratic formula, which is just r is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, in general, there are three different types of roots you can get from this method. The first case is the most easiest. What ha it's what happens when the real uh, sorry when the roots are both real and distinct. Essentially, saying you're going to get two roots that are both real numbers and they're different numbers. The next case is what happens when the roots are real and repeated. Essentially, you get real numbers, but they're both the, the same number. And then there's the third case when the two roots are just complex, which results when this term in here is actually negative, and we are introducing imaginary numbers. So we're going to go through each of these three cases in the next few videos, but in this video we're going to start off with the easiest case that we've done so far, real and distinct roots. And we know how to solve this type, so we can just do some more examples to make it more concrete. So let's start off with one example. Um, let's say we have the differential equation, second derivative of y minus 3 times the first derivative of y minus 4y is equal to 0. Now we can use the same protocol as before, we can try the solution y is equal to e to the rt. And I'm just going to skip a couple of steps and just go straight to the characteristic equation. r squared minus 3r minus 4 is equal to 0. Basically we get that from plugging in this uh, solution. And now we have to solve for r, and we can factor this one out and get r minus 4 times r plus 1 is equal to 0 which means our two roots are r is equal to, uh, sorry, positive 4, and r is equal to negative 1, which means that our two solutions are e to the 4t and e to the negative t. Now, once we found our two solutions, we have to check to see if they're linearly independent. Now, I'll introduce an int a nice little test to see if two functions are linearly independent, but I'll do that in a later video. For now, we can just see that these two are linearly independent because they have different exponents, and we know that we can't scale one of these functions to make it cancel out with this other function for all values of t. So these are linearly independent, so the next step is to just write the general solution, which in this case is just a linear combination of these two, so the general solution is c1 times the first solution plus c2 times the second solution. And there we have it. It's quick and easy. Uh, the general solution to this differential equation. Now, we can actually apply the same protocol we've been using to higher order differential equations. So we can even take a look at a third order differential equation. Let's take a look at the third derivative of y, y triple prime, plus 2y double prime, minus y prime, 
minus y. I'm oh, sorry, minus 2y. And all of that is equal to 0. So this is a third order differential equation, but it's still linear, it still has, is homogeneous, and it still has constant coefficients. So let's try the same technique we used. We're going to test the, uh, we're going to try out e raised to the rt, and if we plug it in, we're going to get e to the rt times uh, r cubed plus 2r squared minus, uh, whoops, minus r minus 2 is equal to 0. And we know this can never be equal to 0, so we get our characteristic equation. And here's the tricky part. With higher order differential equations, it means that we have to find the roots of higher order polynomials. Now, we can actually factor this one out. I'm not really doubt that expects you to really know uh, what this is, but we can simplify this into r minus 1 times r plus 1 times r plus 2 is equal to 0, which means our three roots are r is equal to 1, r is equal to negative 1, and r is equal to negative 2. So that means that our three solutions are e raised to the 1 times t, or just e to the t, e raised to the negative t, and e re raised to the negative 2t. Now once again we have to check for linearly independent functions, and since they all have different exponents we're going to assume that they're linearly independent, which means our general solution in this case is y is equal to c1 times the first solution, plus c2 times the second solution, plus c3 times the third solution. So there we have it. We found the general solution to a third order differential equation, provided it was linear, homogeneous, and had constant coefficients, but we, we did it nonetheless. Now, I just want to point out one quick point. Notice that when we had a linear second order differential equation, we had two linearly independent solutions, and we and our general solution had two undetermined coefficients, or arbitrary constants, I should say. Now when we have a third order differential equation, we have three linearly independent solutions, which means our general solution has three arbitrary constants. We'll talk more about that once when we get into like the theory behind differential equations in a later video. But that pretty much wraps up uh, the real and distinct roots. We pretty much know how to solve them. In the next video, we're going to be talking about repeated roots. So hopefully see you soon.